Welcome to this data analytics tutorial covering budgeting and performance evaluation using Excel pivot tables and charts. In this activity, we are using the real life checkbook data from the city of Somerville, Massachusetts for 2013 through 2016. The Somerville checkbook data is older because we are using a real data set and this is the only data the city has made available. For this tutorial only, we are using a small 22 record data set. For the actual activity, you will be using the full data set, so your answers for the activity requirements will be different, but the process will be similar. For this tutorial on pivot tables and pivot charts, we will be demonstrating using Office 365 Excel for Windows. Other versions of Excel may be slightly different. Excel for Mac is mostly the same as Excel for Windows, except for some small differences in appearance. Any notable Mac differences will be pointed out. Also note that there may be many ways of accomplishing the same thing. We are just presenting one way here. Start this activity by opening the Excel workbook containing the Somerville data and budget worksheet. In general, for each of the requirements in this activity, create a new pivot table in a new worksheet. Name each new worksheet as requirement one, requirement two, etc. Format the dollar amounts in each pivot table or pivot chart using the accounting format with zero decimal places. Format non-currency numbers in each pivot table or pivot chart using the number format with zero decimal places. Requirement 1 asks, from 2013 to 2016, what was the total spending in each of the four calendar years? The first step is to click anywhere in the data in the data worksheet. For the next step, on the Insert tab, click on the Pivot Table icon. Excel will present you with a box containing the suggested pivot table range. Accept the defaults by clicking OK. Double-click the Spreadsheet the sheet tab for the new worksheet and name it Requirement 1. For Step 5, drag Check Date in the Pivot Table Fields panel down to the column box. It will expand to include years, quarters, months, and check date. Notice that the column labels for the years 2013 through 2016 now appear in the pivot table. If we wanted to expand the dates to include quarters, months, or days, we could click on one of the date hierarchy icons next to each year. We don't need to do that for the pivot table, so we will leave them as they are. By the way, if the pivot table fields panel ever disappears, you can bring it back by clicking anywhere in the pivot table that you have created. For step six, drag the amount field from the pivot table fields panel down to the values box. Sometimes the amount field in the values box will be set to count instead of sum. To change the field to sum, click the fields drop down menu, select value field settings, and then select sum and click OK. Mac users. Instead of a drop down arrow, click the information symbol next to the values field. The pivot table field dialog box will open rather than a drop down menu. Click sum and then click OK. Seven, we're going to format the data. Select the amounts in the pivot table and right click to select number format. In the format cells dialog box, click accounting and choose zero decimal places then click OK. That's it for requirement one. We can see the total spending for Somerville for each of the four years. Requirement two asks the question, in each of the years 2013 to 2016, how much was spent in each of the three categories of government, education, general government, and public works? The first step is to click anywhere in the data in the data worksheet. For the next step on the Insert tab, click on the Pivot Table icon. Excel will present you with a box containing the suggested pivot table range. Accept the defaults by clicking OK. Double-click the Sheet tab for the new worksheet and rename it Requirement 2. For the next step, drag Category of Government in the Pivot Table Fields panel down to the Rows box. Drag Amount down to the values box and drag check date down to the columns box. 
Remember to change the value field settings if your field shows count of amount by clicking the field's drop-down menu, selecting value field settings, and then selecting sum. Mac users, instead of a drop-down arrow, click the information symbol next to the values field. In the pivot table field dialog box, click sum, then click OK. To format the amounts, select them in the pivot table and then right click and choose number format. In the dialog box, click accounting and then choose zero decimal places and click OK. Requirement two is complete. We can see what was spent in each category of government for Somerville for each of the four years. Requirement three reads, how much in expenditures did Somerville have in each item class in the general government category for each of the years 2013 to 2016? The first step is to click anywhere in the data in the data worksheet. Next, on the insert tab, click on the pivot table icon. Accept the defaults by clicking OK. Double click the sheet tab for the new worksheet and rename it requirement three. Now drag category of government in the pivot table fields panel down to the filters box. Drag check date down to the columns box, item class down to the rows box and amount down to the values box. Remember to change the value field settings if your field shows count of amount by clicking the field to drop down menu selecting value field settings and selecting sum. Again, Mac users, instead of a drop down arrow, click the information symbol next to the values field. In the pivot table fields dialog box, click sum and then click OK. For step five in the filter area of the pivot table, click on the drop down arrow and select general government and then click OK. Mac users, if all of the categories are already selected in the filter menu, you will need to deselect the select all box before selecting general government. For step six, select the amounts in the pivot table and right click and select number format. Then select accounting format in zero decimal places and click OK. Requirement three is complete. We can see what was spent in each item class by the general government category for each of the four years in the data set. Remember, we are using a mini data set here. Your pivot table using the full data set will be much larger. Requirement four reads, using the budget worksheet included in the Excel data file, prepare a budget variance report that compares actual spending by item class in 2016 for the general government category. Remember to use cell references for the actual spending totals. Also use conditional formatting specifically the shapes, three signs, style, to denote the direction of the percentage variances. Navigate to the budget worksheet. Click in the cell in the first row of expenditures under the actual column, that is cell C6 in our example, and tap the equal sign. Now navigate to the requirement three worksheet and click on the first line item in the 2016 column. Here in the mini data set, it is miscellaneous line item, and then press enter. Once you press enter, you're returned to the budget worksheet and can see that the first item now has a dollar amount. Notice the formula bar has the reference to the cell in the pivot table from requirement three. In step four, repeat the process of pointing to the correct cell for each expenditure listed in the requirement three pivot table. Note, you cannot copy cell references to a pivot table. You must go through the process of pointing and clicking each pivot table cell individually. In our example, there are only two expenditure amounts, but your budget worksheet will list all of them. In step five, sum the actual expenditures column by clicking the total expenditures cell under the actual column, column C, and then click on auto sum in the ribbon. Press enter. The formula to calculate variance in dollars is budget total less actual total. In our example, we will begin in cell D6. Click and type equals, 
then click in cell B6, then type minus, then click in cell C6 and press enter. Next, use the fill handle in the lower right corner of the cell to copy the formula to the rest of the expenditures. The formula to calculate variance percentage is variance dollars divided by budget amount. In our example, we will begin in cell E6. Click and type equals, then click in cell D6. Next, type the divided by sign and then click cell B6 and press enter. For step nine, use the fill handle in the lower right corner of the cell to copy the formula to the rest of the expenditures. Next, select the dollar fields in the budget and right click. Select format cells. Then select accounting with zero decimal places and click OK. Now select the percentage fields in the budget, right click, select format cells, and then select percentage with two decimal places and click OK. Select the totals cells and on the home tab, open the borders menu. Select top and double bottom border. For step 13, select the cells in row one across the top of the budget report. Click on the merge and center button in the ribbon. Repeat the merge and center process for the other two title headings. Now we're going to cover how to display icons to denote the amount of the variance percentages. In cell F6, Enter the formula equals A B S parenthesis E six close parenthesis and press enter. Use the fill handle to copy the formula to each of the rows below it. Select those cells for which you just created the formulas. In this example, that is cells F six through F eight. On the home tab, click conditional formatting, then click icon set. Then, under Shapes, select three signs. Select the cells again, and on the Home tab, click Conditional Formatting and select Manage Rules. In the Conditional Formatting Rules Manager, click the Icon Set Rule, and then click Edit Rule. Mac users, the Edit Rule button is in the bottom left corner. For Windows only, Mac instructions will follow. For this next step, make the following edits in the Edit Formatting Rule dialog box. Click on Reverse Icon Order. Place a check mark in Show Icons Only. Next to the red diamond shape, select Number for Type and enter the value 0 0.10. Next to the yellow triangle shape, select Number for Type and enter the value 0.03. Click on OK twice when finished. Mac users only. This process is similar to the Windows instructions on the previous slide, but looks slightly different. For this next step, make the following edits in the Edit Formatting Rules dialog box. Click on Reverse Icon Order. Place a check mark and Show Icons Only. Next to the red diamond shape, select Number for Type and enter the value 0.10. Note, if the icons didn't reverse immediately and the green dot still appears on top, enter the values in this order anyway. The icons will reverse after clicking OK. Next to the yellow triangle shape, select number for type and enter the value 0 0.03. Click on twice, click on OK twice when finished. Back to Windows and Mac users. Requirement 4 is complete. We can see the variances in dollars and percentages between budget and actual for each item, class expenditure for the general government category for 2016. In addition, we have added some conditional formatting visualizations. Note that budget and actual columns are often listed with actual first, followed by budget second. It is a matter of preference. What is important is to be able to interpret the variances and what they mean. Requirement five reads, Analyze the budget variance report you prepared in step four. What variances do you think should be investigated? Why? When answering these questions, think about
about two ways to analyze variances, by dollar amount and by percentage. That concludes this data analytics tutorial covering budgeting and performance evaluation using Excel pivot tables and charts. This video was created by Dr. Wendy Teets. Thanks for watching.